Welcome back everyone to another Space News Update with me. Lots of big stuff took place last week. We saw Starship fully stacked for a second time, but this time using the amazing catch arms to perform the operation instead of a crane, at least for Ship 20. And Elon then gave us all a long-awaited update on the Starship program, where we learned lots of new stuff relating to Raptor 2 and SpaceX's ambitions for Starship. I've also got some launch news to talk about from last week, namely that we saw a successful Soyuz launch for OneWeb and an unfortunate launch launch failure for Astra's Rocket 3. SpaceX also revealed that of the 49 Starlink satellites they launched on the 3rd of February, only 9 have survived after the rest of the batch was wiped out by a geomagnetic storm. All this and more to talk about this week, so let's get right into it. Starship news is absolutely buzzing right now in the wake of Elon Musk's presentation at Starbase in front of the fully stacked stainless steel beast. I think that the spectacle of the stacking itself was the best thing we got to see last week. It's one thing seeing the water weights being lifted, but another thing entirely to see the Starship itself hoisted to the top of the tower. Really highlights just how far we've come since the last stacking operation. Ship 20 and Booster 4 just look so rough and janky during this, but now they really do look like the rocket of the future. And that's just what this is. During the Starship talk on Thursday, Elon stated that SpaceX hoped that the eventual cost of a Starship launch will be a mere $10 million, which is absolutely insanely inexpensive for a rocket flight. We have known that Starship's main selling point will be how cheap its flights will be, given that the entire vehicle is fully reusable. Harkening back to the 2016 SpaceX talk on making life multiplanetary, Elon stated then that the Starship, or Interplanetary Transport System as it was then known, would not only be the most capable rocket ever made, but also by far the cheapest, even cheaper than the lowly Falcon 1. Another thing we got to see last week was a brand new official Starship animation. This is a great improvement over the old one, which certainly feels a little bit dated now. Look at that old launch tower. Oof. Interestingly, this new animation has two launch towers at Starbase, which we've known has been an ambition for SpaceX for a while, but I must admit I'm surprised how close together they are. Maybe it's just for artistic purposes for the animation, but given that rockets have been known to explode on or just after launch, and of course the fact that there's a lot of room for error in the act of catching a super heavy and a starship, I'm surprised that SpaceX wouldn't put these a bit further apart, so that there's a little bit more SpaceX between the towers. I'm sorry that pun was terrible, but it's a point that I still stand by. What do you guys think of on this. Is there a good reason to have the towers so close together? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And hey, while you're down there, if you consider dropping a like on this video, then it's always very much appreciated. And hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a Space News update. Another thing we saw in this animation was confirmation of how exactly the starships will dock together. In the 2016 animation, the ships docked end to end, but now it looks like they dock back to back instead. This is really just confirmation of something that we've suspected for a while, but it's good to see it finally manifested in an official starship render. Now, I think the biggest news stuff we learned from the Starship presentation was the final unveiling of Raptor 2. We've been seeing glimpses of this engine here and there, but never in the open, up close and personal. It's a marked improvement over Raptor 1, not just in terms of power, but also aesthetics. Look how clean it is. I think, understandably, a lot of people are curious about how SpaceX were able to seemingly remove, like, half of the engine's components. Elon addressed some of this in the talk. One strategy they've taken is replacing many of the flanges, as in the connection between two pipes, with welds, which will simplify things considerably. Many of the individual valves and piping in Raptor 1 have also been consolidated into fewer and more efficient parts as well. Also, it's worth remembering that a lot of the cable spaghetti on Raptor 1 is actually just sensors that are there to understand how the engine performs and aren't actually necessary for it to function. I would also assume that a lot of the external plumbing for Raptor 1 has been moved to be internal for Raptor 2. External piping was probably favoured for the Raptor 1, which is only really a prototype engine due to it being easier and quicker to build, I would suspect. Finally, this isn't actually all of Raptor 2. This model being showcased doesn't have the engine gimbal systems and the flexible piping that are present present on the Raptor 1 beside it, which makes it seem much smaller than Raptor 1 than what the true size disparity likely is. We didn't just see photos of Raptor 2 though, the presentation included this amazing video of a Raptor 2 engine test. I especially love how clean that startup is. 
As amazing as Raptor 2 is, SpaceX still have a few items to fix. Elon mentioned during the talk that they're facing issues with the Raptor's internals melting under the heat of the combustion, and despite the engine already operating at a seriously impressive 230 metric tons of thrust, SpaceX's ultimate goal is to get it reliably operating at 250. So far, they've managed to get an engine to perform at 247 tons of thrust, though we don't really know how sustainable that is with the current Raptor 2 engine design. So, exciting times for the Raptor engine, and with all the engine upgrades in mind, it's actually kind of insane to see Booster 4 and Ship 20 stacked on the launch pad and already be outdated with a new fleet of better, more powerful Raptor 2 engines right around the corner. In terms of when the flight for Booster 4 and Ship 20 will be, even Elon didn't really know the answer during the Starship presentation. The best estimation that he could state would be approval for flight in March, which is about in line with the FAA's announcement earlier at the start of the year that approval would take up until the 28th of February. Elon was optimistic that the FAA wouldn't find any problems with Starship launching, and I would have to agree. The Boca Chica site was already fully approved for Falcon Heavy launches, and yes, while Falcon Heavy is not as powerful as Starship, it's still a monstrous rocket in its own right, and personally, I can't really imagine there being that big of a difference in environmental impact between a Falcon Heavy and a Starship. Anyway, Starship isn't the only SpaceX-related item to discuss from last week. As you may already know by now, the most recent Starlink launch from the 3rd of February has since seen all but nine of its deployed satellites fall back to Earth. This was caused by a geomagnetic storm, a temporary disturbance of the Earth's magnetosphere, which heated and thickened the atmosphere. The resultant increased drag caused the Starlink satellites to re-enter and burn up before they could climb to a safer orbit. The reason why the satellites are deployed into this initially very low orbit is so that, in the very rare case any satellite doesn't pass initial system checkout, it will quickly be deorbited by atmospheric drag, which unfortunately placed them right in the danger zone during Friday's storm. Speaking of storms, back in January there was a dust storm on Mars that approached the Jezero crater, which is where the Perseverance rover and its helicopter, Ingenuity, are currently residing. The storm caused an 18% reduction in sunlight, a problem for the solar-powered Ingenuity, and it also caused a 7% drop in air density, which may have hindered Ingenuity's ability to generate sufficient lift. Therefore, the 19th flight of Ingenuity, which NASA hoped to conduct on the 5th of January, was delayed until the 8th of February. The wait was worth it though, the flight was successful, and saw the helicopter sail across a dividing ridge and up to a spot near the landing site of flight number 8. The helicopter is certainly performing way longer than its initial planned lifespan, and with this latest success, it's now clocked in a total of nearly 35 minutes of flight time. Less successful than Ingenuity's 19th flight was Astra's flight of Rocket 3 on the 10th of February. This launch initially went very well, right up until stage separation. From the looks of the livestream, it seems that the second stage was triggered, but the fairings weren't deployed, leaving the Alana 41 payloads, a 4 CubeSat mission from NASA, trapped inside the rocket. Upon second stage ignition, both halves of the rocket were blasted apart, and you can see that the second stage is spinning out of control on the stream. This will be an unfortunate setback for Astra, as of today they've only had one undisputed successful flight of Rocket 3, but this is ultimately still a very new launch vehicle, and unfortunately it's not uncommon for there to be some teething problems for the first few flights of any new rocket. Hopefully Astra can learn from this mission, and that their next planned flight, so far expected toward the end of February, will go a little bit better. What did go well last week was the latest OneWeb launch, which saw a Soyuz STB place 34 OneWeb satellites into low Earth orbit, bringing the total launched to 428. The OneWeb constellation is definitely growing fast, and is now only 6 launches away from completion. Once fully operational, the OneWeb network will differ from Starlink, its biggest competitor, in that it will primarily be used by businesses, governments, phone network operators, and clusters of communities, rather than individual domestic customers like with Starlink. On the subject of Starlink, SpaceX will be conducting its next launch at the end of next week, and hopefully this time all the satellites will survive. We'll also see an Antares, Soyuz, and a PSLV XL launch as well, in addition to a possible Rocket 3 mission, though I wouldn't be surprised if this is delayed while Astra investigate the issues they experienced with the Alana 41 mission. While we've not had an official date confirmed for this flight, China are planning to launch a Long March 8 very soon and have shared footage of the rocket being prepared at the Wenchang spacecraft launch site. 
Tune in next Monday to hear my coverage of all this and more. And remember to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss it. And if you want to help support this channel further, then please consider checking out my Patreon or my channel membership scheme. Links to all of which are in the description below. Many thanks to all these names on screen who helped me create this content that you're watching. If you want to check out more videos from my channel, then there are now two suggestions on screen. And I'll close this video off with a big thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time.